got a random question here we ask everybody. Uh, what do you put on your hot dogs? Uh, it's not. Ooh, mustard only, dude. Spicy brown. Just mustard, that's it? Yeah, okay. Dude. I mean, I can get behind it. It's, uh, it's simple, but I like it. That's pretty good, I think. What is? Ice white onion. Okay. Blue. Blue. I actually have a very specific answer to this question. I've sent it in the group chat. Uh, peanut butter. I do. Peanut Welcome to episode 103 of the Cast at Ends Creation. I'm your host, Chris Deering. This is a show where interview bands and public figures from the Mathcore and Mathcore adjacent communities. If you beautiful people in chat uh, have any questions or comments, feel free to drop them and I'll try to read them aloud. If, uh, you, if you'd like to sit for five bucks, you get access to some exclusive emotes as well as access to the interviews before they hit YouTube and other streaming services. Uh, you can also sub for free by attaching Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account. It's like taking five bucks from Jeff Bezos' pocket and putting it into mine. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube or listening to this in your car and have no idea what I'm talking about, the show is first shown live on Twitch. Join us every Sunday and Wednesday for the live cast at twitch.tv slash the ends creation. Uh, with all that out of the way, let me introduce our guest today who dropped their debut album, It's a Drink, earlier this month. Welcome in, Rat Punch. How's it going, guys? Hey. Uh, so tell us who you are, what you do in the band. Uh, who's going first? Go ahead. I'll go first. Uh, I'm Ryan. I do the art stuff for the band. Alrighty. Visual member. Yeah, visual member. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Bishop. I play bass and do some vocals. Uh, I'm Seth. I do vocals and synth. Weep whoop stuff. <laughs> and I'm, I'm Nick. I do all the guitar. I'm Dolph. I play drums. Alrighty, uh, it's not too often that I see a uh, band bringing on their uh, visual artist. So, uh, why do you feel uh, he's such an important part? Uh, it's well, you get it, I guess. Well, why uh, are you crucial? <laughs> <laughs> I, want, I want someone else to praise you. Yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's a new thing, uh, but we've just been working with Ryan a lot to do like the music videos and stuff. And we've been talking about doing a lot more visually integrated stuff after this album, after like working with them has been so easy. And uh, he's man, the, he brought it up to us. So. Yeah, he's the mastermind. Like he uh, he just made a visualizer for us that we used at our last show. That was that was really cool. So yeah, we got a projection going behind us now. We need Ooh, the fancy. Out, yeah, yeah. I um. I've, I've been doing a lot of the show flyers. We've been talking about doing some uh, some designs and music video stuff. Um, and at a certain point, I got tired of them asking me about payment situations. <laughs> and I said, if we're going to just keep doing this long term. I really don't want to talk about payment. I would just rather do it because I enjoy doing it a lot. Uh, and Oh, so you're doing it for free. Dude, that's badass. Holy crap. Yeah. All righty. The trade-off was that they had to let me join the band. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, you had to be here. <laughs> uh, so y'all's first release was in 2014. Like, I was stunned to find that out, digging into you guys. That's a long freaking time ago, man. Like, uh, what was that, seven years? Uh, so how did the band form? Uh, me and Dolph have been playing music together since, like, high school, <laughs> like, 2011. Okay. Yeah, I guess we were like a couple of the only kids at our really like upper end uh, high school that liked metal. And so um, we actually, we, we, did we ever play in band before? No, you were, uh, I was in uh, Waves before you were. Okay, yeah, we were in like separate bands for a while that played shows together, but never in a band together. And uh, we were just at the skate park one day. Um, and I had like a shirt that said KYS. We're from Knoxville, Tennessee. And so it was Knox Youth Sports. But oh, usually like, that means yeah. kill yourself. So, uh, yeah, it's like, it's like <laughs> kill yourself. And it, it had this like baseball, like, it looks like a mad ball logo, it's just like this angry baseball, like breaking a bat over his head. It's like, dude, this would be a sick panty. <laughs> that would be a sick band name. <laughs> so, like, 16 and 17 year old us thought it'd be cool to, like, name the band Kill Yourself and have this, like, sports brand <laughs> as our uh, t shirts already. <laughs> so, we, we kind of ran with this. Seth was actually on guitar. Yeah. We had another vocalist at the time. Um, yeah, wow. And then, who else was in the band? Uh, I guess it was Robert. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, Ron 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 Ron. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, we had different band members at the time. Like, that's that's kind of how it started. And then I remember just like rolling up to the first show. Like we we played a weirdly bigger venue than we ever play now. And so they had these like big projector screens, and it just said "kill yourself" on it. <laughs> and like at that moment, I knew that that was like we probably shouldn't keep this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess they liked the one show. And then we came up with Rat Bunch. Okay. Yeah, uh, I've seen a couple bands have issues with uh, their names being something along those lines. So uh, <laughs> that is probably a good thing. Probably a good thing. Um, so we got 30 seconds go in the chat, and uh, Brandon Dowdy, a uh, drummer from there, is in there too. He's asking, so when did you guys start punching rats? All we've done is talk so far. <laughs> uh, I, we changed the name in, in 2014. Yeah, it was kind of a turn. So, like, I guess – when it came to being in metal bands, it was like a lot of the people that I really like to hang out with and were responsible human beings were like not the best artists and musicians. And a lot of the people that were great artists and musicians were just like very either unreliable or just sketchy people in general. And so <laughs> I came up with like a code name for people who call them rats. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'd love to be in a band with this guy, but he's a rat, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. It was kind of a birth out of frustration of that, and we just thought it was like a cool yeah. combination of words. Yeah. yeah. It did, yeah, it did start initially as a melee attack, but now it's a drink. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I do got to ask what's up with the pumpkin and the weapons? You're kind of scaring me a little bit. Yeah. This is our beautiful boy. In the spirit of <laughs> hey, if we start to say something wrong. <laughs> Mind your man. <laughs> <laughs> the the weapons were I guess maybe last year or the year late 2019. Uh, this this mace was definitely bought with the intention of it being a stage prop. <laughs> um, and really? it is like we got uh, did you get on Amazon like something like that <laughs> Unfortunately, yeah. but like it's still it is a weapon like these spikes are extremely sharp um, how would you know, use that as a stage prop just wield it yeah. <laughs> just, just have it in your hand while well, like well, right, Seth has it in his hand while he's doing vocals or something or yeah, <laughs> I thought about like trying to attach a mic to the end of it or something. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. It, it's scary to think about like trying to bring it into a venue though, like just right? like, a backpack and like yeah. walking in with it. Um, <laughs> but it, it is featured in the music video. Yeah. In our um, in our first, I guess, music video release, the hit it sessions. This does make an appearance at the end, and Nick actually, yeah, yeah. like, there's some crazy behind the scenes where he swings it, and because it's a $15 mace, like, the head of it just goes flying off. That was, <laughs> that was scary, yeah. <laughs> Stuck into the wall. <laughs> yeah, well, it sticks into a pinata, and then just slaps the wall, and, like, it, we had, like, four people standing behind it, so, like, could have hit any of us, Yeah. or it could have, like, hit my drum set, it was right where he was swinging it, so, yeah. It somehow was way less <laughs> catastrophic. Than it, it was scary. We all stood in shock. <laughs> like, oh my God. And, like, once we realized nobody was hurt. <laughs> <laughs> so it started out with uh, Dolphin Seth. Then, so how did uh, Bishop and uh, uh, I told you? Oh, here we go. Nick. How did Bishop and Nick get in the band then? Um, I moved to Knoxville in 2016, and I went to the to a show and I met these guys. Uh, we started hanging out, really. I didn't know anyone. And then um, right around that summer was when we wrote like, um, what was it, Snakey's in the Grass and stuff. That was some of the first stuff we did. Yeah, was that 2016 uh, or 2017? That was 16. Okay. Uh, yeah. I was gonna say, I did notice a huge difference in like the sound from like the very first stuff as y'all like went along. Like you could totally tell like there was a stylistic change. I guess around then actually. Uh, yeah, I guess Kill Yourself started out as more like a, like a hardcore, like, like a deathcore beatdown type band, and then we were like, yeah. this sucks. <laughs> yeah, I guess, because in like 2011, that's when we first started writing music, 
And we actually we have recordings. They're not like released on any. No one will also. ever find them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is more like beat down, like even gent and hardcore. Like that's what I guess a lot of us were into at the time. Yeah. Uh, I joined the band 2019, I think. That sounds right. 2019. Yeah, the year before 2020. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was trying to contextualize yeah. that. <laughs> Chronologically, yeah. Uh, and uh, Nick actually messaged me on Facebook saying that I should join because they didn't have a bassist at the time. It was just guitar, drums, and vocals. And uh, Rat Punch was like one of my favorite like local bands. So before I was in the band, I was like, screaming some of the lyrics like into Seth's face at their shows and I, I went to their shows pretty often I, I can't even remember we were probably both drunk and it was like two in the morning and Nick was like it's like dude you're at every show he's like I'll teach you the songs so like uh, <laughs> for a while with uh, some of the first songs maybe even like a majority of them Nick actually like uh, hand tabbed them out on paper for me and we learned <laughs> them together and so that's how I learned a, a good bit of the songs on that first record was Nick was just like, dude, you can do it. I promise. Yeah. So if you uh, can tune it, you can do it. Yeah. <laughs> so that, that's, how that happened. that's awesome. Uh, 30 seconds go in chat says, I have a question for the band. How did so many dime pieces all manage to find each other? <laughs> Not sure what that means, but I guess it's an inside joke with you guys. Dime pieces, dime pieces, just handsome guys. I don't know. I did, I did, uh, watch uh, <laughs> one of their music videos today that has uh, it features uh, one of the vocalists of Arsonist get all the girls and I commented I love you well 30 seconds go is like so sweet to us on like every social media so <laughs> yeah the yeah. Shows, yeah shout out to them they are incredibly incredibly sweet they, they are awesome blush. uh laptop oh uh Brandon says that dime pieces equals sexy mofos so uh there you go. <laughs> uh, laptop gerbil in chat is asking, who's your favorite fan? I guess this is someone that you guys... Is that laptop right? Favorite fan? Who, wait, who asked that? Laptop gerbil. Oh, that's Wesley Noir. He's our favorite fan. Wesley! <laughs> <laughs> it's the Noir roll. We'll play homeless. <laughs> yeah. So you guys dropped a bunch of singles and like short EPs up until like I, I guess 2016 uh, is when you guys just like stopped. So uh, what happened? Why did y'all stop and then come back with your first album? You know, with a five year gap. Uh, so we before Nick was in the band, we had a different guitarist. His name was Robert. Shouts out Robert. Hey. Uh, he's still making music, but uh, when we kind of like transitioned on the day, being more like grind oriented, he I guess it just wasn't really his thing. Uh, but he was like recording us really a lot. So when uh, he, I guess we mutually decided that it just wasn't the right fit anymore. And so then we didn't really have in house recording dudes. So it's hard to do demos and stuff. And then there was like job stuff yeah. that got in the way. And uh, I guess that's why we just never put anything out for a while. But we were always playing shows. Yeah. We went to Illinois a few times. Yeah. That was good. Yeah. Okay. We were still writing music the whole time, too, but we just never got around to recording until, I guess, right when the pandemic hit, and then took a really long time to put out the album after that because of it. Yeah, so it's like yeah. not to do anything for five years, and then when the pandemic hit, you're just like, okay, it's time to record. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. To, uh, to set play. So when I joined the band, like, you know, we wrote, what did we write? Like, Snakey's in the Grass. What else did we write? Uh, Thrash. We wrote, um... Caffeinated. Caffeinated. Yeah. And, uh, we barely know the song titles that are on that yeah. album. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Black Metal. But this album is more like a compilation of kind of like taking that era to now and just kind of being like, this is it and we can kind of move on yeah. Yeah. direction wise. The first song is like the very first song. Rat, I guess Rat That is our shorthand for it. Uh, but that's the first song we wrote with like our current vision of like what Rap Punch should sound like. But I was like way back in 2014 and that made it onto this record. And then there's other songs that we wrote like a month before going into recording. On it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's funny. I think, I think that first song is actually my favorite one out of, uh, all, of, out of all of them. Like it just hits you so hard. So I think it's a great direction to be going. 
Yeah, yeah, that's that's why we keep it around because it, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, it's our classic opener. Yeah, it's too long. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, sounds like you guys have carved out a pretty nice spot with your sound. It's brutal but fun as well. Uh, it really sounds like uh, I really like the odd like electronic pieces that are in there too. Uh, a lot of bands aren't doing that. Um, and uh, vocals are great as well. Uh, it, I feel like it's pretty original. Uh, a lot of bands aren't doing like the whole grindy with like weird scronkiness anymore. And it's awesome to hear that coming back. Uh, most bands are just trying to do like the heaviest breakdown they possibly can. And while that's like great and all, uh, I feel like yours is a lot more fun and uh, enjoyable. So I feel like y'all are really onto something and it, it's some good shit. Really good stuff. Wow. Thank, Thank you, man. That's so yeah, nice. That is sweet. Oh, I, I do like to imagine us as a party band. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I can see that. I saw your set actually for uh, Hit It, uh, where you had like the, conf or there's like the, conf I don't know if it's confetti, but it's some kind of ribbon or whatever all over the ground and stuff like that. And I was like, oh, this is totally, totally their vibe. And you had like the piano, p pinata smashing at the end and stuff like that. Uh, it, was, it was a pretty fun set to watch. Um, yeah, whenever, uh, whenever we were having previews made, Brian made a preview for the Rift City video and described it as kind-hearted party grind. And I thought that that was really sweet because, like, <laughs> sometimes people ask, like, uh, like for one example, uh, my dad shared the the first music video we put out for Nightmare Ants, and he's supportive, and, like, all my family is supportive. So that's very sweet of them, but there were other people who were, like, his age who were, like, what would you call this? And I was, like, I don't know. Like, I guess Grindcore, it, I feel like it's hard to just tell someone who's, like, maybe 50, like, oh, it's Grindcore. And they're, like, well, what is that? But <laughs> I like kind-hearted party grind. So I think that, I think that will stick. At least in my heart, <laughs> it will stick. That's one of the hard things with these bands. It's so hard to just, like, put one label on them. You know what I mean? So, uh. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you could be, you could call yourself all kinds of different stuff, like yeah. post hardcore yeah, yeah. in some parts. You're straight, yeah. straight ahead, like hardcore in other parts, and like it's like Pig Destroyer meeting, like uh, I don't know, Great Redneck Hope or something like that. Like uh, pretty uh, out there yeah. stuff. Yeah, it's almost like we've gone past genres, we've gone past subgenres, and now it's just like you just have to describe bands with adjectives. Like that's all you can do. <laughs> <laughs> So, what are your influences going into this? Uh, your biggest influences? Who wants that first? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I could go first, I guess. Uh, Seth and I do listen to a lot of similar music. Uh, Old Daughters, of course. Great Redneck Cope is, is a good one. Uh, when I was growing up, and even still now, I, I love a lot of the like uh, DeBello Records bands, 31G Records bands. Like anything that Justin Pearson has done is awesome. Uh, you know, like Sawtooth Grin. I really just like the bands that whoever could scream the highest, like the highest pitch scream. I thought that that was like the coolest shit ever. I oh, yeah. that Sawtooth was, like, Grin, it's pretty hard to, to beat. Uh, Hayworth was pretty insane too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know about them until uh, like Mathcore Index, but yeah, that, that one's hard to beat. But they're young. They're young. So they, they've got that on their side, but their, their scream is extremely, extremely high. So of course I love that. Uh, I guess like more on like the the trad grind part. Orphobic nosebleed has always been like a pretty big influence for me, and uh, love insect warfare and like despise you, and uh, the Psyopus. I feel like everyone in our subgenre is like, yeah, we all love Psyopus. Yeah, and it's true because they're the best. <laughs> <laughs> hey, did uh, you see that uh, Silent Pendulum's gonna be putting out some vinyl with them? Pretty insane stuff. Wait, who? Silent Pendulum Records is putting out some Psyopus uh, vinyl. Oh, uh, I didn't see that. How new is that? Yeah, it's pretty crazy, man. Uh, it just happened, like, I think Monday is when he announced it. Something like that. Okay, okay nice. Okay. Well, nice. Uh, and then, like, more noise rock influences. Uh, Gay Disco by Gorilla Toss. When I heard that album the first time, like, blew my mind. Uh, uh, Daughters, too, obviously. There's this band from Las Vegas. Uh, they're really new, but they're, they're called Spring Breeding. They put out a really awesome noise yeah, rock. Shouts out. Here. Shouts out. If they somehow hear this, <laughs> Spring Breeding, message us. Yeah. <laughs> what about you, Nick? What's up? Uh, I don't know. I'd say it will come from more of like a metal background. Like, 
like I, I deliver for the mail and I typically listen to like something from the red cord on my way home or something, you know, uh, but yeah, uh, Seth and Bishop were more into like the noise rock stuff. I could, I, I really liked whenever we did the record, I tried to listen to it like Pig Destroyer and Daughters and just to digest it kind of, you know, have that kind of mindset. That's interesting. Cause you're the guitar player. I mean, I would imagine you're writing like everything, right? Um, meh, it felt that way for a while, but it's now that we have like setups, like it doesn't really matter. Like, you know, maybe I can play guitar the best, but like, they'll just be like, here, here's an idea. And like, it's kind of a conduit situation. Play That's kind of how we, right, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Right. With us is really collaborative. Uh, everyone gets, everyone puts in their own say, and, uh, mm -hmm. the songs end up greater than the sum of their parts after that. But uh, like one of us will bring like an idea to the table. A lot of the times it is Nick yeah. who does it. And then we just kind of like build out from there. Well, I've also got the access too. So I'm constantly, because I've got the little pre-press set up. So I'm just constantly doing something. Um, but that's pretty, pretty much how we do it. We just have like a song bank and it's, you know, these songs sound good. These songs sounds like shit, whatever. <laughs> <You know? laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, for this album, we just tried to get it out of the way. I wasn't really doing too hard. Going too hard on influences. Yeah. Just practice, 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 practice. What about you, doll? Yeah. Well, I would say, like, to speak on the writing process, it usually does start, like, Nick writing a riff, which Nick is a lot more, like, metalcore is where he grew up playing guitar and started out and has maybe the most experience. Yeah. You know, and just playing live shows in metalcore bands. And so it's, like, more of, like, a metal um influence through nick that runs through like an extreme like can't stand to hear like metal and break down <laughs> yeah. set. i'm the anti-breakdown member of the band yeah, well, <laughs> but, yeah and then i i kind of enjoy both so i can kind of like see both sides and we'll, like we i mean we all collaborate and bring it together but <laughs> these two are like polar opposites and like yeah. what they naturally <laughs> will gravitate to. Like Seth wants to write something in like five four. Now, like his natural time signature is five four. It's the weirdest thing. It's a drum. Um, and then Nick is just like pretty straight metal, and so like <laughs> that's how the rap punch is usually written. Like these two very opposing forces. Yeah, and it, it works out. Um, I think one time Seth was being obstinate about something, and he showed me gigging in the middle of that, and I was like, it just sounds like it just sounds like Rings of Saturn or shitty production. <laughs> <laughs> I have had a couple of members of Geigen on here and uh, they, they, might, they might take some uh, some offense with that. But. <laughs> 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 yeah. Undulating waves blew my mind. Yeah, but that is pretty sick. It really is. <laughs> uh, looks like we got a little doggo on here. Uh, what's, what's her name? Bronson. That's Bronson. Yeah, it's my dog, Bronson. Big B. <laughs> Twitch loves a dog, so uh, it's a good content right there. Uh, Cat Food Party says pimp dog mode activated. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, uh, I guess the influences for me, like ever since I wanted to play the drums, I wanted to play fast. And so I remember like the first time I heard like really fast double bass, I think I was like 12 and it was as Blood Runs Black. Yes. My right. Yes. Right. And I was like, this is what I want to do. And so <laughs> for me, it's just like playing fast. I mean, I try to play all genres. I, I've been teaching drums for a while now. And I like, I played Sunday morning gig this morning. And then I play grind shows. So everything in between. Nice. Yeah, by extension, we're, we are a Christian band. <laughs> uh, Christian band. Kind of hearted Christian. <laughs> Ryan, what's your influences? Yeah. Oh, what influences you? Um, I don't know. I like, uh, I, I guess most of my art stuff comes from uh, uh, an affinity for like uh, Weird Tales style, like Eldritch Horror and Body Horror. Um, I like a lot of uh, Carcass and Pharmacy, which Seth kind of ribs me about sometimes. <laughs> uh, that sort of puts me in a headspace to make gnarly shit. When I have to make a poster or something, uh, I, I, I like the the really heavy stuff, um, gross stuff, gross stuff. Yeah, yeah. slime. Yeah, it, it gives me like a it gives me a ceiling that I know I'm not gonna like run up against. 
Seth, uh, Seth always tells me not to not to scare the girls with <laughs> her artwork. Uh, so I have to I have to have that limit set so that I don't scare off the the three girls that show up to rap. When <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> so uh, I can't find the lyrics anywhere. Can you uh, tell me what some what they're about? They huh? should be. Oh, I think so. I haven't checked. I didn't see him on y'all's band camp, but that was, was where I was looking. Uh, do you have a particular song you want to know about? If you, if you uh, don't, in general, what are they? What are they about? Uh, it really goes from song to song. Uh, the squawking anathema, the third to last track on the album. That one's really fun. Our friend Schaefer, who does a project called Earwig Deluxe, uh, which is just like a solo project, and it's awesome. Like hands down, one of the best like noise weird performers ever. Yeah. Uh, but that song is like a weird spaceship story, uh, mm -hmm. where like uh, he's like the AI voice of the ship, and I'm like ground control, and Bishop is a passenger on the ship. Yeah, um, we were listening to a lot of Wormed at that time. Yeah, yeah it's like. <laughs> Fucking love those lyrics. They crack me up. So, we were like, we need to write a song that's like wormed. Um, so why not have them posted? Or I guess y'all thought that they were posted and find out that they're I, not. I thought they were on the already dead band camp, but if they're not, I'll, I'll go home and post them tonight on ours. <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah, we're we're kind of kind of lazy. <laughs> uh, I uh, mean, I guess like other songs. What's piss yourself about? Yeah, <laughs> uh, that's about people being really annoying on the internet, acting like they know everything that they're talking about. And I thought it was funny to, uh, uh, I guess, refer to everything they're saying as pee. And so <laughs> then they have to they have to pee into their mouths to make sure they don't run out of piss to say. Dude, you heard a song about me? That's fucked up. <laughs> I love being annoying. Um, we have a song called DUI. Uh, that one's about drinking and driving. Um, don't do it. Don't do it. We do not condone. Do not condone, uh, condone drinking uh, and driving. That song has a pretty funny story. Uh, and there's a direct reference to our inspiration in that song. Uh, do you know the song Alcohol by Gangrene? It's like an old punk song. No. Uh, Morphobic Nerds really did a really good cover of it. And that was always like one of our favorite party songs whenever we were hanging out. And me and Dolph were like, we need, we need to have a drinking song. We need a drinking song. And uh, it's one of the lines in alcohol is I'd rather drink than fuck, which we always thought was really hilarious. <laughs> and we're like, how do we write something that's even stupider than that? <laughs> so then we made our drinking song about drinking and driving. <laughs> don't do it, don't do it. Yeah, please don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, as far as I can tell, I can't find any info on uh, how y'all recorded this. So who helped you guys record it? Um, so when I was a teen, uh, got out of high school, I did some touring with a band called From Under the Willow years ago. And our bass player, um, he's from this area, and he moved back here, and he runs a studio here called Blackwater Audio. And he did it for a good deal. He's just one of my best friends. And he's shout in out a, to Jeremy. Yeah, shout out to Jeremy. Jeremy. He run, he's in a band, um, Gladiators. Gladiators. They're based out of, well, he lives here, but they're based out of PA, um, Lancaster. Um, so uh, what yeah. was the recording process like? Um, it, well, we had it booked in, what, February or January, but we it was like the 21st of March, and the 17th was the day everything kind of unraveled with COVID. Right. Yeah. Um, in lieu of that, we kind of did, we kind of broke it up. So I did, um, Dolph did all the drums, I did the guitar first, all scratch guitar. And then I did, then Dolph did all the drums separately. Um, and then you guys did vocals kind of, yeah, you know, yeah. we had time. So it just kind of. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it was a little weird with the onset of COVID being right when we were starting to record. Because, uh, I mean, everyone was being super careful because no one knew what was going on. And so we did it very like piecemeal. Like none of us were ever with Nick in the studio when he was recording the guitar parts and Dolph did all the drums in one day. And then I did all like the vocals in one day just to like minimize like contact and stuff. 
Yeah. And then the synth, the synth I did for my house. Just like, I think Meek was it. Yeah, we, we, we just, that's the very last thing we did. Yeah, we just sent him the files and he just plugged them in where we had them timestamped. <laughs> that must have been weird though, being in the studio like all by yourselves, like uh, recording this stuff, huh? Yeah. Quiet. Yes, yeah, quiet. Jeremy is extremely, extremely sweet though. And he's so easy to work with. Like, uh, just like, this is what I'm going to do. And he's like, okay, do it. And so, <laughs> it was, it's easy to work with that. Yeah, yeah. No, no diss on Jeremy for the process being like that. It's just how it had to be. Yeah. Uh, but it was it was weird because like we're a very collaborative band usually, and then having to like split it up like that was it was a it was a hurdle in a couple spaces, but it still ended up really good. So. Yeah. Um. So, uh, what's up with the uh, album cover? Uh, it's kind of like this weird uh, Ouroboros with like festering rats vomiting on each other. Like, I, I don't understand what's going on with this. We got it up on stream, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I guess Thomas did. His, so, he goes by Fearsome Name. This is our page. Yeah, Fearsome yeah. Name. Yeah. Um, but it was the idea was so we had a friend of ours named Eden way before the album to Eden, and when uh way before the album was even done, Seth had paid her to do like a I don't know just some artwork for us, and it looks yeah. like this crazy. It looks like you know the old Area Fifty One games you could play at arcades kind of looks like the monsters and that everywhere they were rats and so i took that idea to thomas and was just like just do whatever make it kind of alien otherworldly looking and he did a great job yeah so yeah thomas fearsome name on instagram Fong, good art uh he did the illustration and then our boy daniel craft did the background that makes it look all colorful and fun yeah. Uh, okay, so you had two different people working on it then. Okay. That was cool. I feel like it fits y'all, like, perfectly. Like, uh, it, it's brutal, but, like, you know, kind of fun. It doesn't take itself super seriously, like, at the same time. I feel like it really fits what y'all are doing. Yeah, it looks like we care, but also it's still fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we deliberated about it for a while. Yeah. Oh, really? Y'all didn't like it at first? Well, the original, the actual, like, the rat thing you see is actually, it's, he drew that by hand, and then... It's, it's, on my, it's at a Seth's house right now. It's like a wooden canvas kind of thing. And he like took, um, it kind of looks like a geometric space scene. He just took um, like textured paint or um, paint and used like newspaper and made it all textured. And, yeah, um, yeah the background was different at first. Yeah, it was like dark and stuff. But, you know, the vibrant background worked out too. Really yeah. well. uh, and that was before we, we started working with Ryan really heavily. So now he's got really big shoes to fill. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've been doing. A, I've been doing a lot more push-ups to sort of rise to the occasion. I've been trying to sin way more. Well, speaking of Ryan, uh, you uh, did the music videos. Am I am I right about that? I, I did the second music video, the one for Rift City. Uh, the one for My Parents was by our friend Jake Putnam. Uh, shout out, shout out to Bud. Um, uh, uh, well, uh, but, we're playing Rift City right now on the stream. Uh, why don't you tell us about uh, what was going through your mind when you're making it? Yeah, so uh, Seth and I talked a lot about the general vibe going into it. I know uh, a lot of times when we hang out in big groups, karaoke always comes up. Um, it's a really fun thing to do when you're a little bit soused. Uh, so. <laughs> that and, and sort of I guess the A to C line in my mind was immediately to like old Super Nintendo games and that sort of uh, that pixelated look um, and that's where it started and then um, I spent a lot of time in After Effects making this sort of like video game style template and like the loading screen and the stage complete screen um, and then I realized I didn't actually have any footage to, to fill all that time with. So um, then I just started looking around uh, public domain archives for just, you know, stuff that wasn't directly related to what the song is talking about, but related enough to sort of, uh, it's filling in gaps maybe that the song leads to the imagination. Uh, so I think- Lots of stock footage. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> lots of 
stock footage, some footage. Uh, we actually, uh, I, I shot one of their practice sessions in this room um, with a nice electric drum kit, which is super hard. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I think that the end result is something that uh, hopefully complements the song really nicely. Um, they sort of fit together. Um, and it was, uh, it was really fun and sort of balancing this gritty sort of subject matter visually with uh, the, the, the colors and the sort of light, not super self-serious tone that uh, we're trying to go for. Um, so hopefully hopefully that, uh, that sort of is, is noticeable. It worked. So uh, y'all were talking about a projection like going along with like, your shows and stuff. I don't know if we were talking about that on on this interview or before the interview, but y'all are doing that. Uh, is this kind of like what the projection is going to look like, like stuff like this? Yeah, it's uh, there, a lot of similar. Around the same time that I was uh, pulling stock footage for that, I, I was you know things that didn't really fit there. I was putting elsewhere, uh, just setting aside so I'd have something. Uh, for these projections for the show and so uh, what we ended up coming up with for the album release show was about a five minute long looping visual of the logo uh, not the same logo that uh, you used for the uh, I guess the thumbnail or whatever you want to call it for promoting this um, but there's a different one that sort of spans the whole screen and then um, I took different psychedelic visuals, different, uh, there's some uh, surgery visuals that I snuck in there that I didn't want to tell Seth about because I knew he'd get mad at me. Uh, Got to keep the ladies in there, man. You can't scare them away. I know. Um, <laughs> good. I don't know. There's a mashup of uh, like really cool trippy visuals, some stuff that's on the gnarlier side. Uh, you wouldn't believe how much footage there is out there of atom bomb tests. <laughs> that shit always looks really, really cool. So I use as much of that as I could find. Um, end result is uh, maybe a little bit overwhelming when you first look at it, but uh, I think it it sort of complements the the chaos of the live shows pretty yeah. well. So yeah, the album release show is the first time that we did that. And uh, and Aunt Mia, <laughs> yeah, which is fun. Yeah, um, actually, there's gonna be a video of that. We got the audio recorded and had a had a good uh, camera setup going, so there'll be a better video. Of that. Ooh, I think my favorite show we've ever played. Yeah. Well, uh, y'all did another video for uh, Nightmare Ants that we're uh, playing right now too. So, uh, what what's this one all about? Where whose uh, idea was this? Uh, well. The, oh, you mean the video or the song itself? A uh, video. The, I guess the video just kind of, the song itself, uh, I have some really awesome sleep paralysis stuff. And, uh, you have awesome sleep paralysis. <laughs> that sucks. Yeah. Uh, he named the song Nightmare Ants, and then we were like, well, I guess we have to write a song for that. Cool. Wait, wait, I think you cut out for a second. Who, who came up with the song, with the song title? Um, gerbil in the chat, it's Wesley. Uh, laptop gerbil. Oh, laptop. okay. We were at his house hanging out, and uh, he was talking about how there's some ants upstairs where we were going to sleep. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure he coined the term nightmare ants. But uh, we heard the song about nightmares, and we we were scrambling to put out a, get a video together for the song because like we were planning to release that one first, and we didn't have a video yet, and we hit up. Uh, but uh, he's in school for video production and stuff at UT here. And so he threw something together for us real quick. Uh, and it ended up pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, the song is just supposed to capture nightmares. And so it's literally about, like, ants. Like, when you were supposed to sleep. I, I like that. I like it. Uh, the, the song is actually <laughs> lyrically about uh, ants that crawl into your head and give you nightmares. And the reason you ate eat, eat, <laughs> eat in your sleep is to get them under control. <laughs> okay. It's a little more intense than I thought. <laughs> yeah, laptop gerbils talking about how they uh, crawl in your ears and give you nightmares. It's uh, it's pretty brutal. <laughs> is that something that kids at like, your school said back in the day? Like, 
you know you swallow eight spiders in your sleep at night. <laughs> I, I remember hearing that, yeah. I, is, is that true? I don't know if that's true or not. <laughs> no, well, okay, someone told me this, and I always, after they told me, I was like, okay, that's true, and I never looked it up to double check, so I'm not sure. But somebody told me that, like, that fact got spread around just to see how easily people would believe something. <laughs> okay, well, I hope to God it's not true, but, uh, you know. It's actually spiders. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Spice. <laughs> So uh, we got a random question here. We ask everybody, uh, "What do you put on your hot dogs?" Uh, it's not Ooh, mustard only, dude. Spicy brown. Just mustard. That's it. Okay. Yeah, it I mean, I can get behind it. It's, uh, it's simple, but I like it. That's pretty good, I think. <laughs> what is? Nice white onion. Okay. Little. Little. I actually have a very specific answer to this question. I've sent it in the group chat. Uh, peanut butter. I do. Ew. Wait, like no meme, like you actually do that? Yeah, for real, no meme. Like if it's crunchy, that's better. Crunchy, that's better. Too. It yeah. sounds dry, is it not? It's awesome. It's like sweet and salty. That's, dude, there's got to be someone in the chat who's backing me up right now. No. Peanut butter. <laughs> <laughs> there's no one backing you up, but uh, <laughs> I got someone laughing at you. <laughs> but, okay, that's that's an odd one. We're going to... Uh, we're gonna move on from that. Uh, who, who else? Uh, who else? Y'all put on your hot dogs? Anyone, I'm a brown only. If anyone says anything remotely that fucked up, <laughs> <laughs> anything close to the peanut butter thing, I can't sit through that. Don't come here, hot dog. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. If it's like a quality hog, just busted. If it's just like a microwave. You know, like wet bag hot dog. Like I'll do the unspeakable and go catch it. And mustard or whatever. Ketchup is unspeakable. Please don't please don't mention it again. Yeah. <laughs> what about you, Nick? I don't know if we heard from you yet or not. Wait, say that again? I said what about you, Nick? I don't think we heard from you yet. Or yeah, yeah, Nick. Oh uh, yeah, the mustard only. Oh, you were the one that said the mustard only in the beginning. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Uh, laptop gerbil in the chat is saying in response to the uh, peanut butter thing, the five of us in chat don't back you. I'm with <laughs> laptop gerbil on this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, uh, y'all released this on already dead tapes. Uh, tell us how you, uh, hooked up with them. Yeah. Uh, so shout out Jake Watkins. Hey. Um, our, our really good friend, Jake, who's in a band called tall Papa. They're kind of like, uh, in, in the dreamy yeah so they're really cool check them out paul papa uh jake and paul papa is like super good friends with josh from already dead but i've met josh a couple times here and uh and jake was like you should just message josh and see if he wants to do it and so then i did and uh josh from already dead hooked us up he put it out and uh they're big cassettes for us. It was really awesome having an actual physical release of something for music. That's a, that was a bucket list item for me. Nice. Uh, are y'all planning on doing like CDs and stuff? Uh, we haven't talked about putting the record on any other format yet. Uh, I mean, it would be awesome to do anything. Uh, CDs, vinyl, whatever. But uh, at the same time, running the cost for it and stuff ourselves would be annoying and so we'll see we'll see what happens yeah. not not denying the possibility but not confirming so uh what's next for you guys you got any big plans happening we got like a tour going on maybe or anything like that uh tour not immediately maybe sometime next year we'll be able to get out for a few days but yeah. uh are putting out new music soon. Oh, soon you're putting out new music again, really soon. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna put out uh, a single and then a small EP. Okay. So, you know, seven years until the next. <laughs> <one>. <laughs> 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 uh, 
Yeah, I guess uh, y'all were saying that these songs were like pretty old, so I imagine your sounds changed a decent amount. Yeah, we've just gotten better and more creative. And uh, it's, it was awesome to finally get this out here. And it's going to be even more awesome when we can start like playing and focusing on the new music we've been writing. Most of our brains are fully developed now, so <laughs> we can't be stopped. <laughs> yeah, we were talking about it earlier. Like, uh, of course, love LP1, but stuff for LP2 is like, it gives the first album a wedgie so bad. Like, pulls its underwear over its head. I really think so. <laughs> like uh and we were talking about recording process earlier i mean we've been able to i mean nick was saying before he he has sent us so much stuff i mean he he really is a powerhouse i I have to give that to nick for sure uh there's there's a lot of material to work with and we're even still just like coming up with ideas but yeah idea for a single yeah yeah here with them Two to three weeks is what we're saying. We're going to put out a single and then drop an EP a little bit after that. Yeah. Oh, right. It'll be a good, a good taste of what we've been working on. Yeah, I mean, what the newest song on the record is not, um, other than Turbo Octane, is about, like, job apps, and that's, like, two and years old. Squawking, too. Squawk. Well, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's the, like, really, like, that stuff is, it really was more of a compilation of yeah everything we've done up to this point. Journalistic. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Documented. It. I don't know why I said yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was. It was like it was like a little journal. It was a little journal of love. Yes. Yeah. You wouldn't say it's a journal of love, dude. That's the name of that. <laughs> it's a beautiful journal of love. Yeah. <laughs> so you guys have played a lot of shows in your time. Uh, what was the best show you guys have played? Best show? Oh, um, well, what, I'll I'll say my favorite show. Um, it's also the worst show. Uh, I know my favorite shows. We we played a show at um, there's like this bigger venue downtown called Scruffy City, and um, and so it's not for us. No, it's, <laughs> so we we are. I guess we have friends that don't like anger music, but like us. So they had us on, and it was like the opener was our friend Paul. He does like it was like a piano thing. Yeah, and Paul. Then, shout out Paul. Yeah, very very you. hot evil. Uh, incredible pianist. Like. Oh, so so absurdly talented it's crazy and uh he opened that show and then we played and then our friends that put us on chrome snatchers they're like a a rock and roll indie band and uh <laughs> it's this it's like a it's like a like downtown like people who like football a lot go there sometimes <laughs> yeah and so it's, a sports bar then yeah, it used to be an old theater. It, so like, there's like a like a, a balcony area. It, it, like, to put it in perspective, the, a guy walked by, saw the uh, triple rectifier I was using, and asked me if I was in a band like Metallica. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> sure. He's <laughs> right in the middle of downtown, so there is a diverse group of people who are there at any given moment. And none of them, not a lot of them are probably expecting like a, a grind. Yeah, the, the best part was, so we we're, well, Seth was on the floor. And yeah, from, our pers- off the stage. from our pers- we're about six feet off the ground. And you can see this crowd being afraid of Seth. And <laughs> he's vomiting, in between vomiting, like continuing to do vocals. Were you like then, actually vomiting? In the yeah. Show? yeah. Jesus like, Christ. Oh, it was pretty awesome. <laughs> Yeah, they didn't know what to do with Seth. <laughs> <laughs> but that was great, yeah. Uh, but the worst show, I'd say for me, or uh, I don't know, really. <laughs> Actually, I can't really. Hmm. We, we worst show, some... we... Oh, I know the worst show. Um, oh, for you. And yeah. it's perfect, because Dolph's not here one time. We we <laughs> did, Dolph, we had like confirmed that we were going to play a show, and then for some reason, Dolph had to back out like a couple weeks before, and like, crap, we don't want to, like, drop off because we already said we were going to play it. And so then, uh, this is when we had our old guitarist in the band, Robert. Um, me and him programmed all the drums as a backing track to play it live. And so we played with uh, just a drum backing track. And, like, one of the fills was programmed wrong. 
It was like programmed at the BPM of the next part, which was way slower than what the fill was actually supposed to be. It's the fill in uh, Rat Dad, the first song that goes into that breakdown. It was at the speed of the breakdown. It's like the speed of the part before. So it was just like this obnoxiously long, <laughs> slow so drum. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, we referred to that set as the Robo Golf set, and we've never done that again. <laughs> Dolph, how'd you feel about him using program drums? I mean, they, they saw the result. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, you've proved your worth there. I, I, I like it. Yeah. Uh, what about the rest of y'all? Uh, best and worst show? Oh, I think like. Probably my favorite show ever was first time we traveled to Carbondale. Um, Seth spent his first year of college at SIU. And so he had made some connections in Carbondale and some homies had like a house where they host uh, like, I think mostly punk shows, but also metal bands. It's yeah, like yeah. Taco stand shouts out. I think it's like burned down or something. <laughs> <laughs> we played the last show there. Yeah, yeah. okay. But the first show, they were like, I don't know why. It was just so crazy. It was like a really dim basement, and it was small. It couldn't have been more than like 200 square feet with like a seven-foot ceiling with like AC. Like, you had to watch your head and get through there. <laughs> yeah. But like, people were going so crazy for like every yeah. band. And it was yeah. – like, that was like the craziest energy of a show that I think we've ever played. And somebody like ended up – breaking an entire like jack daniels liquor bottle and like they're still moshing on top of it and some dude came up and he was like red with blood he's like it's ketchup man it's ketchup. <laughs> like, it was a crazy time but it was some crazy energy so that was probably unmatched energy and uh album alicia has to be up there great one of the best too that show was awesome yeah and, yeah all the um, homies came out yeah um one of the weirdest shows we ever played, we actually played, we were a band, we were in the band for the night for a Chainsaw Luchador uh, death wrestling match. Death, ma death match. <laughs> Wait, what? You had like chainsaws in the death match? Uh, it was a wrestling match and it was built as like a Chainsaw Luchador death match wrestling event. <laughs> I have no <laughs> idea what that means exactly. Like I, I get like wrestling and stuff, but explain it to me. They're using like chainsaws. Yeah, they're like, they had like barbed yeah. wire and stuff. Yeah. yeah, and they were like uh, throwing each other down on like the barbed wire. There's like some like weapons involved. There's probably not a blade on the chainsaw. Yeah, no, the chainsaw was fake, but it was just like amateur wrestling, but like weirdly real because they got like fluorescent light bulbs, like broke them on each other's backs, and like you could tell like everything was real as far as the light bulbs go. And then they like slam each other on the glass, and so they're like actually bleeding and like actually hurting each other. What the fuck, dude? That's yeah. wild. Yeah, yeah, that was like probably the most unique show. Yeah, yeah. We played the walkout for like one of the last guys, like one of the last guys to go on, and he like came up on stage with us and put his arm around me and was like fist bumping as we were playing. Come on, and he tried to put his arm around Nick too, and Nick was just like, "I'm playing guitar, dude." <laughs> Step to the right. Uh, it was super weird. I think the setup was we played like three songs, so like two minutes worth of music. Yeah. We played, so we played two songs, and then we're somehow we worked out a deal. There's like grandparents here, and so somehow we worked out a deal to where at the, after the rustling event, we just finished the set. So we just played like nine songs for Peepa and Grandma, and like all these, and then like you know. Ten dudes wearing onesies covered in bloody glass. <laughs> it was also one of the weirdest bars that has ever been open, I would say, in our city. It's called Bar Marley's. It's like a Bob Marley pun. But it was like some reggae-themed, mostly outdoor bar where they would have, like, one penny beer nights. Yeah, they had penny PBR nights. So, like, basically, Jesus. like, free, like. Yeah. <laughs> it got closed down very quickly. <laughs> That's <laughs> crazy. Was running it, I think, turned out to be kind of a unsavory fellow. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, it was also like kind of gross and dingy. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, it's what really playing the playing the wrestling match was hilarious. Yeah. Dude, that is wild. Holy crap. Yeah. Uh, I played. 
Oh, I'm sorry. I, no, no, you're good. You're good. I'm sorry. <laughs> I uh, I played bass in a in an old band uh, with some friends. It was called Grog, and we played a show at Bar Marley too. And they are right. Like everything they're saying is completely true. Like that bar was so fucking odd. Like the theme was very incoherent. Like you would walk in and there's just fucking sand on the ground. Like there's sand, like not even like everywhere. So you don't really feel like you're at the beach. It just feels like there's sand and random pla- It just feels like dirty. Yeah, there was a goat roaming around there too all the time. There was just like- <laughs> no way. There was a goat. Or just in one corner if you wanted to play. Like, I guess if you wanted to go there and just fucking ignore everybody and drink, like, five PBRs for a nickel, you could. <laughs> it, it really was the strangest bar. And it was like, I guess it's safe, I guess. <laughs> that was probably the weirdest show. Best show, I think, probably was the album release. Um, that that was really good. We played with Callous Style Boys right before that. And yeah, that was also really fun. That... That was at Pilot Life, which is where we will play. Yeah, see you on the 11th. See you on the hell 11th. yeah, hell yeah! I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, yeah. But yeah, that show with Dow Boys must have been pretty insane, huh? Yeah, they were so good. We, I mean, uh, obviously we played last just for the local closer, uh, but it was hard to follow them. Yeah, <laughs> I could imagine. Yeah, yeah, we've been trying to. Uh, I've been trying to start this collection of photos of. Uh, Whenever we see a band that's really, really heavy, we've been trying to get at least one picture of me just making a scared face at each of the, the shows because I, I think that there's like a sliding scale of like how heavy a band is. Like, like your band applies to this too. Like, Sound and Inspiration definitely applies to this, where it's like it's so heavy that like you can't headbang anymore and you just kind of have to stand in shock and maybe be still and be like, you have to try and be still so that the music doesn't see you and like bite you. <laughs> that was kind of how it was. Like, that was another really good one too. Yeah, yeah, yeah good good was sick. Yeah, chops up. Yeah. <laughs> so you guys have uh, tapes, stickers, and shirts over at uh, Rat Punch, RatPunch.Bandcamp.com. Um, oh, I did want to shout out real quick, uh, Steph and Bishop. You guys do a radio show, uh, Funeral Directory. You want to yeah. tell us a little bit about it? Uh, so, uh, I, it's at the college radio station, WUTK, uh, 90.3 here on the radio. But uh, it's one of, it's like the longest running specialty show on that radio station. It's, it's been running for like over a decade now, like well over that. Uh, I inherited the show from Laura, who's in a black metal band called Fim and Nazgul now. Shouts out to Laura. Uh, and so I, it's just like, where else in the in Tennessee are you going to hear extreme metal on FM radio? <laughs> so, Nowhere. Yeah. Uh, and so uh, I've been doing that show for a while, and Bishop started doing it with me because uh, we both spend way too much of our time listening and trying to find the craziest, newest music. And uh, we've been trying to like just uh, bring on people whenever we can, just to share whatever audience we have with anyone. And um, I think I joined doing it. Uh, I can't remember. Maybe it was nearly three years ago now. Um, it's definitely been well into two years. Uh, Dang, so you've been doing it for a while then. Yeah, I've been doing it for probably close to six. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. Okay. I thought this was like a thing, like you were doing, like in college or something like that. I didn't realize this was like a a, a whole thing for you. That's cool. Seth graduated. I never went. I think the only reason I I even got to do it is Seth made one post. It's like, and I I feel like I've never seen him do it since. But he made one post like years ago, and was like, "What do you guys? Do you have any suggestions for what I play on the radio tonight?" And I was like, "Sawtooth Grin." He's like. Dude, come do the show. Like, <laughs> that, we we've done the show a bunch, and we uh, it is really easy. Seth and I uh, we like to butt heads, but it's, it's all in love and and friendship. But sometimes I'm like, yo, new dance, Kevin, dance, bro. It's fucking heavy. New, bring me the horizon. Like, <laughs> yeah. bring me the horizon. It's kind of fucking heavy, and he's like, Shh, please shut up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, the show has like. Uh, a long settled wall, way before I was doing it. Uh, but uh, 
and like before I started doing it, it was mostly just like a black metal show, you know, like and Laura was just playing like all the most obscure black metal I'd never heard of before. <laughs> and uh, so I, I try to respect her vision of the show, you know. Hell no. <laughs> 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 uh just want to shout out to mf spitten for a seven with prime you are awesome uh cat food party says ask him about the show before the funeral directory and how much they hate it <laughs> shout, out, ben. shout out ben cat food party gazella records follow them all uh ben does the indie aisle which is the specialty show right before the funeral directory and uh that show's been going on for a super long time, too. And Ben also listens to a ton of music. Uh, I know he, he works with a lot of, like, show production. Um, so I think he, he's probably working Big Ears, which is, like, a huge festival that happens here every year. And uh, he just, he plays such interesting stuff. It's, it's really just the Bindi Isle, because it's just whatever he's been listening to at that time, which is, which is always super good. And we will do the show together there's there's not like a uh, concrete host for that show at the moment but uh but but that's his show and it, it's really really cool and it's obscure and odd and he plays like metal music too um all sorts of stuff it's it's really like an eccentric grab bag of stuff that that happens right before the funeral directory on mondays yeah yeah it starts at eight so if on Monday nights, if you're ever bored and need someone to play music for you, tune in online. Yeah. I got the India on the female director. Right, and I'll put a link to that in, uh, in the description. Um, so uh, what was the last thing that you guys listened to? Like, literally the last thing. Uh, here, I can, I can check. Yeah, we can tell you. I got you. Okay, so uh, I had a... I had a caffeine day. I was blessed by caffeine. I, I went for a few days without caffeine and then I get up super early for work. And uh, if I go a few days and then I drink like a bang, yo, shout out bang, uh, give us an endorsement. Um, <laughs> energy drink, dude, fucking endorse us. Cover my kidney stones. So uh, I was able to listen to a bunch of stuff today, but the <laughs> very last thing that I listened to was uh, the new Every Time I Die. And uh, yeah, that shit's good. I'll, I'll say this now. Maybe I might be. I don't know if I'm the most emotional. I think maybe I'm the. I, I cry easily. I love to cry. Spit it out. He's always crying. <laughs> I listen. To, I listen to, uh, the new every time I die, I made me cry when I was driving. It's I'm so good. <laughs> really? Okay. I haven't listened to it yet. I wasn't like expecting a lot, but I, I guess it's good then. The stress rehearsal. Uh, I don't know what Jordan Buckley's right hand's been doing the last couple of years, but it's pretty quick. Like it's, it's quick as shit. I literally think it might be perfect. I only made like <laughs> three quarters of the way through, but I, I straight up let a fucking tear out listening to it when I was on my way here. And I had to tell everybody, I was like, dude, I just cried every time I died like, on the way here. Oh, no, that's uh, awesome. The thing that I was listening to was the new uh, chop, 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 chop. It's seven times. It's, it's one more. <laughs> One more chop. Uh, the new chop, chop, chop was really good. It came out recently. I was listening to that. Yeah, they're crazy. Chop, chop. I just saw a post today about that. I do need to look into it. It's cool. It's in the like cyber grind wave that's been happening. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I want to make sure we're good on. Uh, this is an old computer. Make sure we're good on. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's not too bad. You just need to get a quick close up of your face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Nick? What was the last thing you listened to? Um, honestly, the, uh, that Replicant record, Malignant, Malignant Reality. Have you checked out Replicant yet? No, I haven't heard of them. It's ignorant how heavy it is. That's pretty ballsy. It's, 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 it's perfect. <laughs> yeah, it's perfect. <laughs> like, it makes me want to, like, get a surgery for, what did that guy on the toilet bell <laughs> say? It, the toilet of Felderby was great. He was like, he was like, tell me that a single brain cell was used when, when the guy drug his knuckles into the studio to write that riff. Like, it's just like, that riff's got a forehead. That was great. But it's stupid. Like, not a single bend on the record. Just straight up death metal. It's great. Yeah. It's, it's really zany, dissonant death metal. Yo, hit us up Replicant, bro. Yeah. Holy yeah. fuck. Also, shout out Replicant. I suggest whatever you're ready. <laughs> Whatever you're ready. <laughs> and uh, Dolph? Um, maybe like Doja Cat. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> a 
Like the last metal thing I listened to today it was probably like the new Phil Charcho record, which also took like as long as Rap Punch to come out. So I was definitely like more into that style of music when their first album came out. And then the new album was like really good too. So I enjoyed it. Oh, yeah. Uh, and uh, what about, I, I guess we could have, uh, um, I'm sorry, I forgot your name, Ryan. I guess we have Ryan to answer that too. What was the last thing you listened to, man? I've been on kind of a nostalgia kick lately. So the last thing I listened to uh, was The New Rain by Born of Osiris. Uh, <laughs> before the interview started, we were talking about all the synth stuff on that album. It's really, really fun. It just doesn't feel like it should fit, but it does fit. It's like, it's like Europe style synth. <laughs> like, it's so goofy, but that, uh, that keyboard solo on abstract art kind of goes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh just real quick uh what's the album of the year so far for you guys uh this noise rock band nopes put out a really awesome record in january uh i've been listening to that record like all year now they're awesome nopes uh, it's called it has a funny album name it's uh dj ork like dork but like york <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, the new Discord record is really good. The new Replicant record. Uh, I don't know you guys can want. I think mine has got to be a uh, Garden of Burning Apparitions. It's by a uh, full of hell. It's it's so so gnarly. Yeah, those guys are crazy, man. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the the I didn't I didn't think music could get that noisy. Um, like the first time I listened to it, I, I legitimately got. A little bit scared, um, <laughs> which, is, which is now a new barometer for uh, for good music for me. Is how <laughs> if it scares me as much as uh, that record did the first time I heard it, then we're in for something good. <laughs> that's a that's a tough one. I, I, I like I said, I really enjoyed what I heard from the new Every Time I Die. Uh, we listen to so much new stuff for the radio show that it's it's sometimes hard to become like super intimate with the albums that we listen to. Uh, I'm really anticipating the new Plebeian Grandstand, so I don't want to say quite yet, but I am really excited for new for new Plebe G. Shout out Plebe G. Yo, come to America, dude. Uh, <laughs> Good old Plebe, Plebe G. Uh, uh, Replicant also is really hard to beat. Malignant Reality is just like, uh, man, fucking Nightmare too. Like, there's so many amazing dissonant black metal and dissonant death metal things coming out right now of like, incredible production value that it's it's hard to pick and I, I sort of think i'm sorry i know i'm rambling but because of the radio show it's like you never know what's going to come out like right at the fucking end so i'm not sure yet yeah speaking of your record it hasn't come out yet yeah it hasn't it hasn't uh but yeah i i understand where you're coming from bishop like i'm kind of the same way i've listened to so much stuff for for this podcast uh yeah it's kind of hard to be uh super intimate with stuff mm. I don't know. I haven't really been jamming too much new music this year. I've been listening to uh, the next four years by the United Nations um, a lot. I didn't know, like that super group band. It's like Converge and all yeah. sorts of people in that. I feel like that Structures. Yeah, that new Structure stuff was just really heavy. Super heavy. The production was really crazy. Um, yeah, yeah, just been listening to a ton of like Hollow Earth. I don't know if you've ever listened to them. I love, they're like I don't know. Picked them up. Picked up a record. They were on tour with a band called Great Reversals like ten years ago in Georgia. I don't know, uh, but yeah, I don't know. The new Every Time I Die is good. Maybe the Replicant record. Though. It just <laughs> we, all, we all love Replicant. Replicant. <laughs> Replicant. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> uh, yeah, that, that's stupid. Dolph. <laughs> what about uh, what about you, Dolph? Oh man, I don't even know. Replicant. <laughs> <laughs> But no, I get that answer a lot. A lot of people don't stay up to date on uh, new music coming out. Kind of just uh, stay with the stuff that they've been listening to. I guess like the last album that was like mind blowing for me was Imperial Triumphant's last record they put out. But I think that was in 2020. Yeah, yeah, that was, uh, yeah, it was. I feel like they just put one out, did they not? That's definitely my 2020 album. I don't think I really have one for 2021 yet. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, that's about all I had to talk about. Let's show out something else I wanted to bring up. Uh, 
Let's see, what do we got? Uh, we've got a video probably for the album release coming out soon. We're dropping new music soon. So don't wait. Don't think you gotta wait eight more years this time. We're in the laboratory. Yeah. Trust. Trust. <laughs> in the laboratory. <laughs> We're going to give Bishop a good talking to about that peanut butter hot dog thing. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. That was, that's been weighing heavily on me actually. <laughs> so, uh, if you're looking for some intense grind that's made for the parties, you should check out. It's a drink. The debut album from rap punch. Uh, you guys are on Facebook, Bandcamp, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, and all streaming platforms. Uh, I guess you could pick up some tapes from already dead tapes.bandcamp.com. And uh, some other merch from uh, ratpunch.bandcamp.com. We're going to have all these links in the description. Uh, are there any like social stuff that I'm missing for you guys? Hmm. Twitter. Um, the bishop's pointing at me. So uh, you can follow me on Instagram if you like. It's uh, at a hedge wizard. I post a lot of my personal art there, a lot of what I'm working on for Rat Punch. Um, it's a good place to keep up to date on. Okay. Growth. I'll, uh, I'll get a link from you too as well, and we'll put that in the description. Um, also, uh, as for me, drop my channel. So you, uh, drop my channel. Follow so you always know when I go live. You can also sub to get access to the interviews before they hit YouTube and streaming services, as well as some exclusive emotes. Uh, find me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. YouTube folks, if you enjoyed the video, please drop a like, tickle the notification, tickle the notification bell, and don't forget to subscribe. It's a great way to support me for free. Check out my music, The Sound of Dance Creation, at thesoundofdanceCreation.bandcamp.com. We got pre-orders up for Boomers, Zoomers, Desperate Coomers right now. Uh, my next guest is Chicago-based mathcore post-hardcore band Past Forms. Join us this Sunday, the 24th at 7 p.m. Central for the live cast. Thanks for being here, guys. Hope you had a good time. Oh, yeah. Thank yeah, you. Thank you, dude. Oh, yeah. And thank you guys for watching and listening.